Hey dudes and dudettes, welcome to another board game review video. I hope most of you know which channel you're watching by now, but okay, I'm gonna say it. Demented Robot Games. Okay, if you haven't seen this channel, subscribe immediately because we're cool, okay? No kidding. Okay, so uh, we're here today, or better to say I'm here today to show you a super cool game today. Uh, the game in question is, I uh, just want to prepare you, is pretty well known, pretty renowned. But I just decided to do a review anyway. Why not? A cool game is always cool, regardless of how renowned or uh, not renowned it is. And after all, they may, there may be some of you guys who are new to the hobby who just want to see which cool legendary games you may get for your collection. So, the game that we're, we're talk, taking a look today, sorry, is the game called Seven, Seven Wonders Duel. Most of you guys know this, guy, uh, this game's older brother, the game called Just Seven Wonders. Now, this is an offshoot of that game, if I may call it that, uh, which came later, and this is just a two-player version of the game. It's based on the same basic principle. You're drafting cards and you're trying to see uh, how you're going to use them and how you're going to deny your opponent what they want, essentially. So this is a younger brother of the game Seven Wonders. This is specifically a two-player game. Uh, this is a game designed by uh, Mr... Sorry, Mr's... <laughs> two guys. Um, Antoine Baza and Bruno Cathala, both very, very uh, renowned designers, great designers. So both of them working on the same game means something, okay, first of all. Second of all, Repos Production, they have some cool games. Uh, so this game is very promising. Whether it's any good, we're going to see in the following section of the video. Now, this is the game that takes place, as you can probably deduce by the artwork on the box, in the ancient world, uh, more specifically in the world of ancient Greece, where they, uh, where um, Greece was not, uh, if you know your history, you will know that Greece, ancient Greece, was not a unified country. Uh, it did not have unity. It was divided into these city-states, and each city-state was basically following its own policy. They waged wars against each other all the time, and this is exactly what's going to happen in this game. So in that respect, this game is historically accurate. You are going to uh, run one of two cities who are fighting for supremacy, basically. You are going to build buildings in your city, expand uh, your city, trying to be wealthier, more powerful, uh, have more powerful military, more powerful science, scientific achievements, more uh, wonders built in your city. You are trying to basically outsmart your opponent and be better than your opponent in as many possible possible ways as you can. This way or the other, you'll be drafting cards, each of which represents a building. You will be placing those cards on your table, trying to create a more successful city-state and win the game, okay? That's the general concept of the game. Now, let us skip to the next section of the video where I will show you how the game looks, how it's set up, and how it works, and how it's played. So let's do that. Okay, people, here we are at the table. Uh, the general overview of the game goes as follows. Uh, as a player in this game, you are going to represent a city, okay? So uh, the game, as I have already said, takes place in ancient Greece. Uh, if you know a little bit of history, you know that they had these city-states. They weren't a unified country. Every uh, city has its own little state, and they often fought against each other. So this game is historically pretty accurate that way. Each player is going to represent one of these opposing city-states who are fighting against each other and try, uh, who are trying to win the game in every possible way, through military supremacy, through scientific uh, researches, scientific advancement, through culture, through the quality of living, through production, through resources, through money and wealth, in every possible way, okay? So, every, every player in this game is going to represent uh, one of these two opposing city-states who are fighting uh, against each other in all these ways. The game is going to take place over the course of three ages. Uh, from the mechanical standpoint, each age represents one 
uh, round of the game. So there's going to be three rounds, three ages essentially. Each age is going to have its own deck of cards that you're going to draft from. You're going to see how that works a little bit later. So each age is going to have one of these decks. Uh, uh, this way or the other, uh, over the course of the game you're going to be drafting cards from the table, from these uh, pyramids of cards. You will see how they look a little bit later and you will see what you can do with these cards. Every card in this game uh, represents some sort of building that you will be able to include in your city, build in your city and try to make your city more, more pow powerful that way. We also have uh, wonders that we'll be able to uh, build in our cities. World, world's wonders which are represented by these bigger cards. Um, so, over the course of the game, we will be acquiring these buildings, acquiring these cards, placing them, building them in our city, and try to use abilities of those buildings to uh, make our city more prosperous, more powerful, more richer, wealthier, and stuff like that. Uh, in this game, you will attempt to win against the opposing player uh, by uh, in three po different possible ways, okay? You can m win by gaining military supremacy, which you will keep track uh, of uh, in, uh, by moving this little uh, marker. You will see how, this go uh, how it goes. Uh, that's one way to earn victory. This victory may happen anytime during the game, in which case the game immediately ends its instant victory by military supremacy. You will essentially gain victory if you push this military marker all the way to your opposing uh, si opposing player's uh, city, in which case you have invaded them and you immediately win the game. The other way to immediately win is through science. You will see how those cards look and how that functions later. If you gain scientific uh, victory, again, the game immediately ends and you immediately win the game. But if uh, none of these two victory conditions happen over the course of the game, then at the end of the third age, when all cards in the game have been played in some way, you will calculate victory points and try to achieve civilian victory by having most victory points, uh, more victory points than your opposing player. So there are, there are three possible victory conditions here. Okay. Now, how do we set up the game? First, we will place this board here on the table. We will orient it so that these arrows point to one, one of them will point towards us, the other one will point towards the opposing player. Then we will place this military, red mil military marker here in the center of this board on the neutral space. This marker will slide one way or the other to, to see how uh, powerful everybody is from the military standpoint. We will then place these tokens here. I will see, I will tell you how those work later and how they are resolved. Then we are going to randomly select five of these tokens. There are more in the box, but we are going to select five and place them in these spaces. Okay. Those are progress tokens. You'll see how they work later. Then we're going to take three decks, each pertaining to one age in the game. We are going to shuffle each of these decks. We're going to randomly take three cards away from each of these decks. They're going to be thrown out of the game and they won't appear during the game. This adds unpredictability to the game. So even if you know cards by heart, you won't be able to know exactly uh, the, uh, what's coming up because three cards are randomly thrown out. And then finally, you will take th three random guild cards. You will recognize them by this level, letter G in the lower portion of the back side of the card. You will take three random cards without looking what they are, of course, and you will shuffle them inside of this deck. Okay, let's just imagine I have shuffled them inside of this deck. Uh, these are going to bring you some, some scoring opportunities over the course of the game. Okay, and then finally, uh, everybody, uh, and then finally, everybody is going to receive seven gold. That's your starting money. Okay, then we're going to do a little bit of uh, drafting. Okay, these big cards represent wonders that you'll be able to uh, to build in your city. So first, you're going to determine who the starting player is. You will then draw four random cards from uh, the deck that contains wonders. You will place them on the table and then beginning with the first player, you will start drafting. The first player will pick one wonder and put it in their playing area. Okay, then the second player will pick two wonders 
and put it put them in their playing area and then finally uh, what remains the card that remains will uh, belong to the first player again then we will draw uh, four uh, other cards place them on the table and draft in the exactly same way this time beginning with the second player okay when this process is over every player will end up with four wonders in their playing area those four wonders uh, are four wonders they can potentially build in their city and when we have done all of this we can just st uh, set up the first age and start uh, playing the game now before i start explaining how the game actually works from the point of view of of uh, how the, the turn structure goes what you can do with cards and stuff like that i should first uh, explain different card colors different card types and the card anatomy for you guys so that you can understand what all these cards are and what it means to play them in various different ways okay so they are there are several uh, different uh, card colors in this game okay so for example we have brown uh, colored cards those are cards that uh, produce resources raw materials actually there are three raw materials in the game wood stone and clay uh, you don't see clay here uh, yo, yes yes this uh, symbol represents clay okay so there are, there are three resources raw materials that you can use then there are uh, gray cards these guys here they can produce um, they generally produce manufactured products there are two kinds there's papyrus it's this icon here and there's um, glass it's this icon here then we have yellow buildings those buildings are uh, trade buildings or commercial buildings uh, yes I, th I think they're called commercial buildings these buildings uh, are a little bit of everything some of them will bring you money some of them will bring you resources some of them will uh, boost your trading abilities you will see how that works later these cards are very versatile they're also important because they will earn they will um, help you earn more money when you discard a card but you'll see how that works later then we have red cards red cards are military cards they uh, give you military uh, power each time you gain a certain amount of these shields you will move this military token towards your opponent closer to invading them okay and gaining mil military supremacy uh, then we have green cards those are scientific cards those uh, will bring you closer to scientific victory some of them will bring you points but uh, most importantly they will have these symbols on them there are several several seven different symbols and they are important for reasons that i will explain to you guys later so these guys guys are very important because they can they are your alternative ways to victory as way as as well as military cards then we have uh, some cards that we don't have on the table but you will see them enlarged on your screen we have purple cards those are guilds and uh, there's only going to be three of those cards and only in the third age these cards will uh, bring you some uh, scoring opportunities at the end of the game and uh, have I mentioned everything yes they are there are blue buildings they, they aren't any on the table right now, but you will see them enlarged on your screen right now. Uh, these are civil buildings, which represents various, uh, represent various, various objects uh, in your city. They will uh, predominantly bring you victory points. They may seem insignificant at the beginning, but if you don't manage to win through military or science, they will be more than important, uh, immensely important, because at the end of the game, they will bring you a lot of victory points, which you can use to actually uh, create for yourself the civilian victory those are kinds of cards we will uh, see in the game now what is the anatomy of the card each card will have several things on it it will first of all have a name in the lower portion of the card which will tell you thematically what that building is then it will have a color i have just explained the colors uh, then it will have its effect in the colored part of the card which will tell you what the card does what special ability it has what it brings you essentially and then finally it will have its cost here in the on the left side of the card below the colored section of the card and it will tell you what it costs to build uh, that building to put it in your city which is very important some of them will be free some of them will be less expensive some of them will be more expensive and that's very important uh, for you to be able to actually place these cards in your city 
So, uh, how do you pay for uh, placing buildings in, uh, on your city? That's important for you to understand before I start uh, explaining the structure of the game. Uh, you pay for the for being able to place the card in your city by paying what it what its cost is. Sometimes it's completely free, like this building here. It costs nothing to put it in your city, but sometimes it will cost money, as you can see on this card, for example. Sometimes it will cost resources, one, two, three, several resources that you will have to be able to produce in order to place a card. Now, that part is most important, because uh, if a card costs a resource to build, um, it will usually happen in, in later cards, in the second and third ages. Let me find a card for you here. Okay, if a card costs resources to build, in this particular case we need to have one stone, one wood and one papyrus to build this building, then you need to be able to produce these resources in your city. To already have buildings placed in your city that produce these resources, to be able to place this card in your city, add it to your city. If you lack some of these resources, you can then pay to the bank to get those resources that you do not produce yourself. The cost of, of a resource that you lack uh, is uh, calculated in the following way. The base cost is two gold, two of these guys here, uh, plus the amount of that resource that your opponent produces. So obviously, the more powerful your opponent is at producing that resource, the more you will have to pay. So for example, let's say that I don't have a papyrus. I have stone, I have wood, but I don't have a papyrus to build this building. Okay, I will provide these first two resources, stone and uh, wood, but papyrus I have to buy from the bank. I will pay the base cost of two gold, plus two money, plus uh, however much my opponent is producing. Let's say that my produce, the opponent produces one papyrus, that's one additional gold that I have to pay for each papyrus that I need. So I will pay three for one papyrus. If I needed more, I would have to pay three for each papyrus. That's basically how you pay uh, for resources. That's called trading, okay? So you can either produce resources to pay for the building or uh, pay for the resources or the combination of thereof. The final way to build a building is uh, to have its alternative cost. For example, certain bu buildings, when placed near a city, will hold a symbol here. You will see this military building has this little crown here. For example, this commercial building has this little pot or whatever it, it is here in the upper section of the card. Now later on during the game certain cards will appear like this third age card for example which will have uh, alternative costs. It will cost two clay plus one glass but alternatively it will cost uh, this symbol which means that if you already have a symbol in your uh, city that a uh, card in your city that has this symbol then building this card will be free so for example if I have previously built this card that carries this symbol and I already have it in my city later on during the game I would have to pay nothing for this card because I already have a prerequisite which is this building here okay so that's the final way to build a building uh, so you have to pay attention to these symbols it's very important okay uh, and that's it uh, about the costs that, uh, about, uh, of building the cards, putting them in your city. Now we can start actually finally explaining the game. Now the structure that you see in front of you in the middle of the table is the structure pertaining to the first age. It came from the first age deck. And this is exactly how you should lay the cards out. Okay? You will see that some of them are face up, some of them are face down. Now the rule when you start playing the game is that only those cards are available that are not covered by other cards. So this first row of face-up cards are available. You can take any of these and uh, use them in various different ways. I will explain those ways later. But these cards that are covered or partially covered are not available. Okay? So when this card is removed, this uh, played, uh, this card is still partially covered by this card. Only when both of these cards are removed, played somehow in the game, only then will this card be completely free because it's now uncovered. And, and then it will immediately be turned face up and face up and it will be available for, for playing. This card is still partially covered, so it's not available. That's how the whole system works with these structures. Each age uh, uh, will have a different structure. So for example, uh, age number two will have uh, a different structure that you can see now on your screens. 
uh, the age three will have yet a different structure, which you can see now on your screens. So each age will look differently and uh, it will have a different strategy for getting these cards. Okay, that's something that you need to uh, know uh, right now. So how do we play the game? Playing the game is actually very easy. How you play is much, uh, much more easily explained than all of this stuff that I had to explain to you guys previously, okay? When you play the game, when it's your turn, you can pick the available card in the way I have just described, okay? And then you can do one of three things with it. You can either build it, okay? Take it into your city, pay its cost, and just place it in your city, okay? It's now an active part of your city. It has the ability, whatever it is in the color, Part, colored part of the card. Uh, when you gain more cards of the same kind, you will stack them up like this in your city uh, because only these icons are important from that moment on. Okay? So that's one of the things you can do. Just take the card and build it in your city by paying its costs. I have explained to you guys how you pay the costs. The second thing you can do in this game is uh, with a card is just discard it. Okay? You will take the card, uh, take the card out of the game place it on the discard pile. You will have a specific place on the discard pile, doesn't matter. And then you will get money for that. By default, you are getting two gold, two money, sorry, uh, for the discarded card, plus any number of yellow cards that you have in your city. Okay, uh, so if I, have, uh, if I have discarded a card, I will get two money, plus if I have these cards in my city, I will get one for each, so I will get a total of four gold for doing that. This is useful in two, for the, two different reasons. Uh, first of all, I'm earning money by discarding cards, especially if I have a lot of these yellow buildings. Second of all, I'm denying my opponent one card I know they may want, okay? And finally, the third thing you can do is build, build one of these wonders, okay? So you will have four wonders in front of you, as I have explained at the beginning, uh, uh, of this demonstration. Uh, when you want to build a wonder, you will take one card from the table, place it, tuck it underneath this wonder face down like this. Then you will pay these costs shown on the wonder, and then you will resolve these effects on the right side of the card. This wonder is now, be, is now act, uh, an active part of your city. It will bring you a certain amount of victory points. That's the third and final thing you can do with the card. Okay? <clears throat> Uh, so you can use cards that you know your opponent wants to build a wonder, thus denying them the card. That's one other way to strategically play the game. And that's basically it. You will do this uh, uh, as long as the cards last. When all cards from the age are depleted, you will then set up the second age, do the same thing, and then you will set up the third age and do the same thing, essentially. If at any point during the game you have as much military supremacy so that, uh, so that you can move your uh, military marker all the way to your opponent's city, you immediately win the game. The game is immediately interrupted and you are the instant winner. Uh, if at any point you have uh, scientific building, buildings that have six different uh, signs, you will see that there's a sign, a symbol on every scientific card. There are seven, seven symbols total. If at any point you have a set of six cards that with different symbols, you immediately win through science. The game stops and you are immediately the winner. Uh, if none of those two, thing, two things happen, you will then play all three ages until all the cards have been played and then you will calculate your points. You will then pay attention to all components in the game that have these uh, laurels with numbers, uh, you will add them up and see who the winner is. And that's basically how you play the game, okay? I haven't explained every single detail to you guys, but you have a pretty good idea about how this game works. Now let us go to the final section of the video where I will tell you what I think about the game if you want to listen to me uh, and my opinion, of course. And that is the game of Seven Wonders Duel for you guys. Now you know how it works and you know pretty much in detail uh, how to play this game. Haven't, I haven't talked about every single detail, but you have a good idea. I'm always trying to do that, to give you a good idea of the general concept of the game and most important mechanics and how it works, how it feels, so that you can make your own decision and form your own opinion about the game. And ultimately, uh, you don't have to listen to my opinion because it's just a subjective opinion, okay? Now, I don't like beating around the bush and I won't do it this time either. I love this game, okay? 
I'm not saying it's the best game I've ever played. I'm not even saying it's the best drafting game out there, but it's more than a decent game and it just works. And it's a very cool thing that a dual version of a very well-known game exists, which streamlines uh, the game and makes it more easier for two players. It eliminates some complicated stuff from a multiplayer game and just kind of condenses the whole thing into a very neat, portable, quick, practical little package specifically designed for two players, which is a super cool thing, okay? Uh, what do I like about this game? Well, almost everything. I'm not saying it's a perfect game. It has, I have some minor quibbles about it, but it's generally a very good game. The drafting mechanic is it's extremely good. How certain cards are covered uh, and cannot be taken. So by taking a card, you're unlocking some unlocking something new for your opponent. You don't know what it is. You may have just unlocked a very cool card for those guys. Okay. Uh, then uh, the uncertainty of the game because three cards from each deck are thrown out uh, randomly. You don't know what those cards are. So even if you know cards by heart, you cannot be completely sure uh, what's left in the game and what's not, which is also super cool. The way in which you can play cards, you know, you can build them, you can uh, throw the card out of the game and earn money, and at the same time denying that card, uh, uh, denying uh, the other player that card, especially if you know they are really desperate to get that card, you know, that's a very cool thing. Building these wonders, getting benefits from these cards, multiple uh, winning strategies, you know, boosting your military, boosting your science, or uh, just prolonging the game so that you can win uh, by earning more points. Everything is up for grabs, you know. You can try and win against your opponent uh, by, by boosting one aspect of your game, in spite of the fact that they have better city cards. Uh, you know, if you manage to be very strong in that one aspect of the game, you can win prematurely and just be an instant winner. It's all cool. Management of the resources, management of the money that you have. Money will always be an issue, you will never have enough. Everything about this game just works. It also looks beautiful. The whole uh, variety of the game, where each age has a different structure on the table, different alignment of cards that you get to take, it's also super cool. So everything about this game really works and it's really cool. Now I do have some minor quibbles about this game. Uh, the main of them being, the mo main quib um, thing that I don't think works perfectly in this game, uh, and that's the only one that I'm gonna uh, tell you guys, is the fact that sometimes you can really be a victim of just bad luck. I'm not saying this is a luck-oriented game by any means, it, because it's not, but sometimes the, the distribution of the card can just, cards can just work against you, you know? I've played a, a couple of games where I just didn't have any resources. I was just, and, and it wasn't because I was playing badly. I was, was not playing poorly, but somehow the cards was, were distributed in such a way that my opponent got all the production cards, all the cards that produced uh, raw materials and goods, and I simply couldn't build anything. I was completely crippled, and it wasn't because I wasn't playing a good game, uh, I just didn't have enough luck. So sometimes it can happen in this game that the cards just don't like you, and you have zero production. If you have zero production, there's almost nothing you can do to win. That's a huge problem in this game. So it can sometimes happen. You will be very frustrated about it. Luckily, it's not a major issue because it doesn't happen all the time. You have to be extremely unlucky for that to happen. But it, it is possible and I'm just warn, warning you about this, okay? But mostly this game just works and it's nice and uh, it works really well. Uh, it's quick, it's dynamic. Your turn will be over in, in a couple of seconds and your opponent can uh, play after that. You don't feel like you're wasting time. The game is beautiful that way. Um, and uh, the way it escalates from age to age is also really, really cool. So all in all, I do recommend the game. I'm not saying it's the best game in the world, but it's a worthy addition to your collection. You should definitely check it out. So that's it, boys and girls. Thank you for watching. I hope I was able to help you at least a little bit. Uh, thanks for watching, sharing, subscribing, and keep doing those things, of course. Keep spreading the word, please. Tell your friends about this channel if you like it. And that's it. Uh, until the next time, goodbye.